the dimension, the dimension of a vector space is said to be the number of vectors that uh, that particular set or that particular space is said to contain. Um, it's, it's a number. Uh, so the dimension here of a finite dimensional vector space V is denoted here by uh, the dimension of V and is defined as the number of vectors uh, contained within that particular basis. Um, and, and some better uh, statement than what I said a couple of moments ago. Um, not the number of vectors in the space, but the number of vectors in the basis is what I was trying to trying to say here. Theorem, all bases in a finite dimensional vector space set to have the same number of vectors. Um, and so the, the idea is that if you're in, in R3, then the basis uh, there would form uh, a set of three vectors. You can have different vectors for that basis, but the number of vectors for the basis would always be the same. So if it's an R2, then you expect to have two, two vectors for its basis. Uh, R4, you expect to have four bases, four vectors in that basis. This second theorem is actually a, a, a remix of a theorem that was stated before um, you, you know that theorem where we said that um, if you have R vectors and if the, the vector space has N vectors in it, if R is less than N, then those set of vectors do not span the vector space. And if R is greater than N, then those vectors are not linearly independent. Well, it's the same thing right here. So here, let V be a finite dimensional vector space. And let here these vectors, these n vectors, form a basis, be any basis there in V. Then, if a set has fewer than n vectors, then it cannot span, produce the uh, vector space. It, it doesn't. It doesn't have uh, enough. But then, if you overload the the system, then in that overcrowdedness, you get linearly de dependence. Linearly dependence. Um, too much of inbreeding uh, would cause uh, uh, some health issues. Here, find a basis uh, for the solution space of a homogeneous linear uh, system, and then find the number of vectors in that, uh, in that solution space. Here, find a basis for the solution space for the homogeneous linear system. What does it mean that a system is homogeneous. Not necessarily. <laughs> what does homogeneous linear si a system mean? A homogeneous linear system means that it is a system where each equation is set to equal to zero. That's what that means. Very simple. This is find the solution space. So what they're saying is take the matrix, reduce it, and then solve for the solution. Very straightforward. Yes, sir. Row reduced echelon form. Yes, sir. Solve the system. Hmm? So when you solve this system, You get this, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So when they say find the solution space for the homogeneous linear system, all they're simply saying is find the infinite 
solution set. That's all. Because here, you notice that uh, here we have implementing solutions because on that main diagonal, we get a zero on that uh, A33 uh, part, which means that um, uh, this first row and the second row will depend on that, that term there for X sub 3. So, so this statement here is translated find the infinite solution set. So here we, you recall from chapter one, we said x sub three equal to t. That is, it's a parameter, it could be any uh, value. Notice that the first equation says x sub 1 minus, I'm going to just go ahead and just write x sub 3 as t is equal to 0. x sub 2 is equal to what? 0. And then we got x sub 3, which is equal to t. I'm going to try to put that in a meaningful statement here that the vector or vectors that we're after are of this form. Here, x sub 1 is t, x sub 2 is 0, x sub 3 is t. So here, x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3. This equals to t, 0, and t. Its skeleton form is 1, 0, 1 times t. How many vectors do I have there? I just have one. The one that I have is one comma zero comma one. So how many vectors do I have in the solution space for the homogeneous system? It's only one, right? Now, now this skeleton form simply says that since t varies, t is a parameter, t is any number. So just make t any number you want, five. So the vector you get there for that particular uh, uh, basis will be 5, 0, 5. But t can be 10, so you can get 10, comma, 0, comma, 10. I mean, t can be anything, infinitely many. But, but that skeleton form is only of that one vector. Now, you're going to find out in just a minute that if you have a 3 by 3 system, and for its solution space of the homogeneous system, what does that look like? Um, the homogeneous system is AX equal to zero. That here for this problem, its dimension is one. But I got three, I got three equations, right? So I got two other equations out there that they are hungry for some bones, B-O-N-E-S. They got clothes, but they're looking for some bones to put on the bones so they can get up and walk and, you know, like you and me. One, one of those uh, uh, equations, in terms of its skeleton form, it has its bones as one, zero, one. So I'm expecting to have two others out there somewhere. Well, they, they are, they do exist. Now, now where do they uh, exist? They, they, they want to exist with AX equal to B, and if, if that's possible. Now, here for this um, uh, particular uh, system, uh, it won't be possible because here I have, uh, I have this last row, 0, comma, 0, comma, 0, but that's fine. Um, here we're only concerned about AX equal to 0 for the homogeneous linear system, and so its basis is 1. Now, let, let's move on, and let, let's see now how did that get it down there like that, I don't know. Um, take this um, take this matrix and reduce it on your graphing calculator. 
and let's see what happens to that one. When you reduce this, I get one zero zero one one fourth one fourth zero one zero comma zero. I have four unknowns, x1, x2, x3, x4. Look at that first equation. This is x sub 1 plus 1 fourth x sub 3 equal to 0. The second equation is x sub 2 plus 1 fourth x sub 3 plus x sub 4 is equal to 0. So notice here that this system, I have two floating parameters that I don't know what they are. Uh, that represents the x sub 3 and the x sub 4. If you look at the main diagonal, I can represent x sub 1 by whatever else I have over here. I have a leading 1 there at the, um, the represent the x sub 1 position. I have a leading 1 that, that's going to represent the x sub 2. x sub 3 and x sub 4 could be infinitely many possibilities. So here we set x sub 3 equal to s, x sub 4 is say t. So that means now that x sub 1 is negative 1 fourth s, looking at that first equation, and x sub 2 is negative 1 fourth s minus t. Let me see if I can write that out here. x is equal to x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3, and x sub 4. x sub 1 is negative 1 fourth uh, s. x sub 2 is negative 1 fourth s minus t. x sub 3 is s. x sub 4 is t. I'm going to group them. I'm going to group the s's together. So this is negative 1 fourth, negative 1 fourth, 1, 0, times s. And then just get the t's together. This is 0, negative 1, 0, and 1, times t. So how many vectors do I have here in this basis? I have two of them, right? This guy right here and that guy right there. And, and so I list the basis for the solution space. There they are, negative 1 fourth, negative 1 fourth, 1, 0. And then 0, negative 1, 0, 1. And how many do I have? I have 2. We call that the dimension. Okay. And they all, they all run that same scheme. Uh, okay. So that's all you have to do. So on the test, I'm going to ask one problem here. I give you a system like this, and so I ask the question, uh, find the, the basis for the solution space for the homogeneous linear system, and then also find the number of vectors in that basis. That's called the dimension, right? And, and, and the cool thing is that this guy right here, that graphic calculator, it saves the day, right? Okay. Any questions? Let me stop there and, and look at the uh, next section.